unfortunate. You did announce some news today, and that wasn't entirely positive. Four players suspended for the first game against Virginia Tech, including some big names, Jalen Marshall, Dontre Wilson, Joey Bosa, maybe the best defensive player in the country. What's the message to the team after something like that happens before the season begins? Well, this has been going on. This is news from about two months ago, and, and uh, every case is different, uh, but uh, the coach has been planning without the four players for quite some time now. Um, my mind, you know, to actually bring it up now was because it was me today. And, uh, and um, I, I knew it was my decision. I knew we were going to get asked. And I didn't want it to be a 30-day story. I wanted it to be a day story. So we're, we're moved on. And um, if it was a character flaw or bad people, it would have been dismissal. It wasn't. It was college stuff. It was academic or social or I don't want to get into it, but it's not. And uh, so I'm, I'm good. And uh, uh, more importantly, our players are good. You talked to the three guys here. We chatted briefly on the plane, and they're, we knew about this a while back. And and uh, the good thing is on offense, the skill is not uh, – we're, we're, we've recruited very well. Uh, Braxton Miller is going to – I think people forget how good he was and is. And – the defensive end that's a Joey that's a that's a hit that's a that's a sucker punch that but we've also recruited well there they're just the the differences you see playing time a bunch of zeros next to those young guys but they're talented coach the week before the national championship game you campaigned for the parents of the players to be paid by the NCAA to go to the championship game and that was passed and I asked this question because it doesn't only impact Ohio State it impacts all college football share with us a little bit with us how much the players appreciated that they actually gave me a trophy, That's and right. our athletic director a trophy. I've never, it's sitting right, usually that kind of stuff I put in the office, just it's a feel-good off, you know, the stuff mm -hmm. around. That's sitting right on my desk, about three feet from my, from where I sit. I actually look at it because that was, uh, first of all, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And, and Jerry, you, you appreciate this. Our players' first time off after reporting in June, because they don't report in August, the old days when we report in August, and mm -hmm. you report, I don't know, were you uh, all summer there? August, yeah. All summer, though, those guys are going. No break because finals butt right up to the uh, training camp. They go through the season. We played on the 12th. School started on the 12th. Was spring break eight months later. And so uh, when I start hearing about, hey, let's add more games. Let's do no, it's over. Don't stop that conversation. When I hear that, you know, don't 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 go there because uh, I'm not. The current model, you can't do that. I just think it's the right thing to do. Right. Coach, you talked about Braxton Miller. You talked about from the podium that you being a former wide receiver coach that you were gonna give some extra attention to him. And you've talked about what type of dynamic player he is, and people have forgotten. Um, what are you going to be able to bring to the offense? What will he be able to bring to the offense if he's not under center? I had never been this excited about getting my hands on a guy. I don't know yet. You know, we've done running with him, and and he's got it all, you know. But, but we all know that when someone, the biggest challenge is what's he going to be like with someone, the nuances of a guy in his face of bump and run coverage, of the catching the ball in traffic, all the things that he's never done. Now, once the ball is caught in his hands and he's got it tucked, we all see what he can do. I'm not, we're not going to spend much time on that. We're going to spend a lot of time on the releases, the nuances, the top ends of your route, and then also catching the ball in traffic and getting it put away. Coach, you've been in this situation before where you won the national championship the year before and you're getting ready for the next season. What would you learn at Florida in that situation that you'll use this year? Uh, great question. It's uh, I did learn a lot, and it's very difficult. Someone asked earlier the journey to the top or staying at the top, which is more difficult. And I, you couldn't answer that, but I can tell you which one's more enjoyable, and that's the fight up the hill. Right. Uh, the, up the hill, once you're there, uh, that's uh, uh, I mean you talk about arrows are now officially pointed at you everywhere and and uh, We haven't really talked to our team much about we don't talk about national champions We talk about nine strong you've been to our place many times and it's all about unit production and maximum capacity per unit So it's really cool the way we do it. I did learn lessons of Florida um, positive and negative, you know positives that uh, uh, how hard it is, negative is, how you manage the expectation and not. The most important thing I have in my heart right now, I don't want these players to have it become a job and not enjoy a win. And I can promise you, Coach, that's not going to happen. But it becomes difficult for them to enjoy as they continue to have success yeah. after each and every win. It becomes more of a mental game. And, and, and when I look at it, You'll have to do one of your best jobs of mentally preparing these guys, not only you, but your, your coaching staff and your assistants uh, at the other positions, strength and conditioning.
because they have so much stuff coming at them. You know, whether they're elite players and you talk about agents, whether it's just family members, I think you have to really get them to, to buy in and stay with you. Isn't that going to be a bigger challenge as well? It sure is. And I, Billy Donovan on our run in Florida had the same run. He won back to back. And I walked, was very close with Billy and his team. And I remember walking in the locker room after we beat South Carolina, this is basketball. And Joe Kim Noah walked right by me. And we looked at each other and he says, you know, we used to enjoy winning around here. And he threw his towel down and kept walking. And it was because coach got after him. They didn't win the game because they didn't play the expectations. And Billy and I have talked about that many times. And I remember after we beat Tennessee one year by two touchdowns and, and the Gator Nation and, our, and the coaches were just so disappointed we didn't play better. And I can't allow, I, I, you can't control the outside. You can control what goes on in that locker room. And uh, I'm, I'm on a mission to make sure we enjoy every moment uh, when we play well. So does playing Virginia Tech first game help you with that sense of urgency? Did the suspensions in a strange way help you? Uh, I've never, <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it that way. And, and uh, I think probably it has uh, because there's a lot of focus right now. There's a lot of purpose right now and, and I think whenever you open it with a on the road against an extremely talented team it does redirect all your focus if you're playing a team that you should hammer it uh, although I don't mind those games once in a while either uh, but this uh, I think you're right and I think it did and I've never thought of it that way yet but now that I do it has how important is Mickey when you talk about a guy who is able to communicate with each one of these players on an individual basis to the success of the program when you talk about uh, sports performance training. Yeah, he's the deal breaker. I've told people this uh, actually today that uh, when the Ohio State job was offered, I, I don't go do that unless I can get uh, Coach Mick with me. I'm not, I'm at the point in my career where I don't want to retrain a guy or this, this guy means more to me, means more to our football team. He, right, As we're talking, he's with our players. Mm -hmm. When I'm back doing stuff, he's with our players, and he's so much more than, I don't even know if he teaches them how to put a bar in a, in a weight lift. It's so much more than that. It's about selflessness. It's about discipline. It's about doing things right, work ethic, and and um, he's with those guys nonstop, and, and it's easy to evaluate him, mm -hmm. and he's done a great job for us. Last year, I can remember you saying the offensive line's really got to come together during camp, and, yep. and they certainly did. Ed did a great job with them. Is there a unit that you look this year in camp that has to come along? I mean, we're, we're pretty, you know, the, the, the hit we're going to take with three skilled players out of the receiver, but think about this. You have Braxton Miller, Curtis Samuel, Noah Brown, Johnny Dixon, uh, uh, Paris Campbell, and I mean, and then you got Mike, the, the established guys, Mike Thomas, Nick Vanette, and those guys. So, you know, I'm not overly concerned. We, we, we have to get them ready. You lose Devin Smith, Evan Spencer, and then those three guys for the first game. But the one thing that we've recruited very well at that spot, now it's just got to get them ready. And you as well as I do, it's, you know, it's much different at home against an overmatched opponent as opposed on an evenly talented team on the road. To be the starting quarterback of this team, opening day, what are these quarterbacks going to have to do to differentiate each other? Well, we started it already. We're not waiting until we started uh, the leadership component uh, that uh, Coach Mick has been evaluating them all summer for me. I've actually been getting weekly updates on that. Uh, and then we're going to chart everything imaginable. And I take back what I said a little bit in the spring about you can't go with gut instinct. I've been thinking I am going to, there's going to be part of that involved. Uh, but you're also going to have to have statistical analysis to have those conversations with the, the parents and the families because and I made the comment earlier, when you, when you, when I'm an old man and we're all sitting there watching uh, Ohio State's greatest games, you're going to see one of those three guys show up because they, they're, they're part of Ohio State history, all three of them. I never believed that thing about the gut feeling anyway. <laughs> I didn't even said it either. I mean, <laughs> do you envision scenarios where both are healthy and you play both? Sure, sure I do. I, I, I don't want to get out ahead of myself because each situation is different and. And, uh, you know, I can see that uh, all three will be very involved in game plans and because they're all good players. You know, and I've, I've the negative about a quarterback, not, and I'm not talking Braxton because I separate, he's, he's an athlete slash quarterback. Quarterbacks are hard to, you just stick them, so, hey, put them all on the field together. And Earl Bruce even said that to me, you know, he gives me this. And I, <laughs> and I start doing and say, well, what can that guy do? So it's, uh, you'll never hear me complain about great players, and we have some.
Okay, I'm saying two. You're saying three, perhaps. I mean, I know you said that Braxton moving to wide receiver a little premature, but you've talked about him as a wide receiver. Are you still playing around with him as a quarterback? Is it a situational sure. quarterback? Sure. I mean, we all, you, you break two chin straps and he's your quarterback. Mm, right. And he better be ready. <laughs> and so uh, all this conversation is premature. And you guys know that as well as anybody. I mean, Coach does. You, a week and a half from now, we could be having a much different conversation. <laughs> Uh, so I want him to be ready to throw the ball, and, and he will be ready to throw the ball. You know, one of the things that we talked about a lot, and I, I think part of the difference last year with this team was just that the defense became elite, you know, became a championship-level defense, and you expressed concern to us when we were there in preseason saying, I'm not sure we need to get there. We need to have an elite. We need to have a championship defense. What happened to make it a championship defense? Well, you start with players. Uh, I think we had some guys like Darren Lee, Eli Apple, Tyvis Powell, Von Bell that were very good that became elite players. I mean, they're by the end of the year, they're playing as well as anybody. I think your, uh, you know, your premier guys like uh, uh, Joey Bosa became, you know, arguably one of the best in the country. And then everybody played well. But and I don't want to uh, not give credit where credit is due to our coaching staff. Chris Ash was an absolute impact hire, impact hire. Larry Johnson was an impact hire. And Luke Fickle, the way he grew as a coordinator and coach, outstanding, and Coach Combs. And you're right, now we turned the ball four times against uh, Oregon. And it was, you know, we, that, was, that was an outstanding offense. And then also the way they played against Alabama and Wisconsin, what they did to their great running back, Melvin Gordon. That was elite defense. And championships, don't that, that would have never happened without that effort on defense. Well, it also wouldn't have happened without Ezekiel Elliott, who just found another gear there late in the season. At what point, what do you think changed where the light kind of went on with Ezekiel? It's, it was never, light was off. It was just as, um, he was a guy that, you, you get a guy, I've used the name Percy several times, or Percy Harvin, that just, it's, it's ridiculous from day one. Zeke wasn't like that. From day one, he was a guy that needed to work. He's the hardest working running back I've ever coached. He's the guy that, uh, you hear stories about second level effort. You know, with second level, when you get to the back of the second level. When he broke the one against Oregon, the first touchdown, I seen him do that in practice 250 times. And uh, uh, he's a he's a gr absolute grinder at practice, and that's it showed. We've talked about all of the things this program has going for it right now. I mean, you're in a very admirable spot, and yet every coach has concerns. So, what? keeps you up at night or at least delays slumber very slightly for you as you head into well, the season. The, the number one is that that darn it, injury, it just makes you, you know, that just tears your heart right out. A, a guy doing something stupid, a, a disciplinary issue, that drives you nuts, but it doesn't rip your heart out because that's self-destruct, you know, that's their own decisions. But uh, of Braxton Miller, that injury, I, I'm out that'll, that'll never leave my mind when a kid puts that much into it and all of a sudden you look and you say, oh no. And so what I spend a good majority of my time, more than ever now, and Jerry, you appreciate this, is making sure everything we do at practice, everything, is efficient. You know, we're not, there's going to be no unnecessary contact, head collisions, whatever. And then everyone on our, everyone associated with Ohio State football has a job at practice. And if I see a ball, a bottle laying around, uh, you know, some kid gets hurt, that's, that's the most devastating thing. It's not fair to them because they work too darn hard. Head coach of the Buckeyes, Urban Meyer. Coach, again, congratulations on the national championship. It was fun for us yeah, to be along on that ride, and we look forward to this season. Yeah, you guys are great. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Now, the head coach of the school, many feel his best position to challenge the Buckeyes. Michigan State's Mark D'Antonio up next.